Welcome to my channel MK Medical Lectures Learning with Artworks like Drawing and Calligraphy. In this video lecture, we will discuss about the anatomical and physiological divisions of the cerebrum, its lobes, cerebral hemispheres, and functional regions of the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of our brain and is the seat of intelligence. It provides us with the ability to read, write, and speak, and to make calculations, and to remember the past, plan for the future, and imagine things. The cerebrum accounts for about 80% of the brain's mass, and consists of two large parts for showing this here I am drawing the superior view of the brain. And this is your left cerebral part of the cerebrum, mean the left cerebral hemisphere. And this is the right cerebral hemisphere which are essentially mirror images of each other. In a bundle of axons, called the corpus callosum, connects the two cerebral hemispheres to one another. The surface of the cerebrum has many raised ridges, mean convulsions, called gyri. For this, here, we have zoomed into a surface portion of the brain, for example, and a single ridge or convulsion is called a gyrus. These convulsions greatly increase the surface area of the cerebrum to have more cell bodies. Moreover, during the embryonic development, when brain size increases rapidly, the gray matter of the cortex enlarges much faster than the deeper white matter. And as a result, the cortical region rules and falls on itself. These poles are then called gyri. Well, these gyri are separated by grooves. A shallow groove or depression is called a sulcus, and a deep groove is called a fissure. As the longitudinal fissure separates the right and left cerebral hemispheres, and several sulci divide each hemisphere into lobes. The lobes of the cerebral hemispheres are named after the skull bones they underlie. For this, here, I'm drawing the lateral view of the brain. This is your frontal lobe, which forms the interior part of each cerebral hemisphere. It is bordered posteriorly by a central sulcus. And this is the parietal lobe, posterior to the frontal lobe and separated from it by the central sulcus. The temporal lobe lies below the frontal and parietal lobes and is separated from them by the lateral sulcus. And this lobe is called the occipital lobe. It forms the posterior part of each cerebral hemispheres. The boundary between the occipital lobe and the parietal and temporal lobes is not distinct. Besides, cerebrum has two layers. Here I am drawing the corneal section of the brain, mean a midsection between the anterior and posterior of the brain. This is the longitudinal fissure, which is more prominent here. This thin layer, called the cerebral cortex or gray matter, which is the outermost 
part of the cerebrum having thickness of about 2 to 4 mm. It has nearly 75% of all the neuron cell bodies in the nervous system. Here, just beneath the cerebral cortex is a mass of white matter that makes up the bulk of the cerebrum. This mass contains bundles of myelinated axons that connect neuron cell bodies of the cortex with other parts of the nervous system. Some of these fibers pass from one cerebral hemisphere to the other by way of the corpus callosum and others carry sensory or motor impulses from parts of the cerebrum to nerve centers in the brain or spinal cord. Furthermore, deep within each cerebral hemisphere are several masses of gray matter, which are named as caudate nucleus, putamen, and globus pallidus. I am showing it in the diagram with gray color. These gray masses are collectively called basal nuclei or basal ganglia. And this is a part of our limbic system. Moreover, the cerebrum provides higher brain functions. It has centers for interpreting sensory impulses arriving from the sense organs and centers for initiating voluntary muscular movements. The cerebrum stores the information that constitutes memory. And thus, the cerebral cortex has many specific functional regions that perform specific functions. And upon it, the cortex can be divided into sensory, association, in motor areas. Here, it is a side view of the brain that I'm drawing to show the different functional regions of the cerebrum. The sensory areas in several lobes of the cerebrum are involved in perception and read impulses that arrive from sensory receptors. And these impulses produce feelings or sensation. For example, sensations from all parts of the skin arise in the interior parts of the parietal lobes along the central sulcus. The visual area is located here in posterior parts of the occipital lobes. And here is your auditory area in the temporal lobe. The sensory area for test are located near the base of the central sulcus along the lateral sulcus. And the sense of smell arises from the centers deep within the cerebrum. The association areas of the frontal lobes control a number of higher intellectual processes. These include concentrating, planning, complex problem solving, judging, personality, memory, and intelligence. Besides, this is the Wernix area that has been referred to as a general interpretive area. It is located near where the occipital, parietal, and temporal lobes meet. It plays a role in the integrating visual, auditory, and other sensory information and then interpreting a situation. Motor areas control the execution of voluntary moments. In the primary motor areas of our cerebral cortex lie in the frontal lobes, just in front of the central sulcus. In addition to the primary motor areas, certain other regions of the frontal lobe affect motor functions. For example, this region called the motor speech area or broca's area. 
It is just anterior to the primary motor cortex and superior to the lateral sulcus. This area generates the movements of muscles necessary for speech. Above the motor speech area is a region called the frontal eye field. The motor cortex in this area controls voluntary movements of the eyes in eyelids. In another region, just in front of the primary motor area, controls the muscular movements of the hands and fingers that make skills such as writing possible. And with this, thanks for watching our video and support us by subscribing our channel and do like and comment below about our work.